Once upon a time, there was a small army of tin soldiers. They had been specially selected as a birthday present for a young boy. The boy's father was particularly proud of the tin soldiers. Never had he seen soldiers that had been so lovingly made and precisely painted. They looked very lifelike in their blue and red uniforms, and they were just the kind of tin men the father wished for when he was a boy. Just before the birthday party, the soldiers were carefully wrapped in a box and set alongside all the other presents. Now the young boy lived with his sister, and they were taken care of by an especially wonderful nanny, who always made sure that the children were prim and proper and looked their best, especially today for the party. She made a game of the boys receiving his birthday presents and blindfolded him so that everything would be a surprise. When the blindfold came off, the boy was thrilled. There was a great hobby horse which he had never expected. He charged about the place on it like one of the knights of old. Next was a beautiful brass horn. The boy blew the horn as if he were bugling for his cavalry to follow him in a charge. Another present was a harlequin jack-in-the-box. It seemed to be an interesting toy. But the present that happened to capture the boy's imagination was, of course, the beautiful set of tin soldiers. He seemed stunned when the box was first unwrapped. His father was quite delighted that his boy liked the present he had chosen. He knew how toy soldiers can come to life for a child. In their world, the tin men would absorb many hours of play, drilling, parading about, and finally marching heroically into imaginary battle. But as carefully crafted as these soldiers were, there was a flaw. One soldier had been made with only one leg. He was the last soldier to be cast, and there had not been quite enough tin to finish him. To remedy this, he'd been completed with a false leg. From the beginning, though, the boy called him my one-legged soldier. There was no denying that there was something special about him. The one-legged soldier seemed to be more noble and even more lifelike than the rest. He stood as steadily on his one good leg as the others did on their two. The boy took him to his father. He insisted that this figure seemed so alive that he thought he could actually hear his heart beating. Whether that was true or not, the steadfast little tin soldier and his men had made this the best birthday ever. The boy was entranced by his new tin friend. And soon he was pretending that he was the gallant soldier attending not a birthday party, but a whole dress military ball. He played at arriving at the dance and presented his compliments to the general, his father. In an instant, the soldier noticed the most beautiful girl at the ball. She was a ballerina doll a toy that belonged to the boy's sister. The steadfast tin soldier fell immediately in love with the ballerina, and soon the two of them were dancing the night away together. It had been an enchanted evening. 
But the real magic had just begun. The party had been so much fun that the hours had slipped away, and now it was time for the children to go to bed. The boy and girl, like children everywhere, didn't want the fun to end and begged to stay up just a little longer. But late was late and bedtime was bedtime, so off they went. Later that night in the nursery, the nanny had dressed the children for bed, tucked them in, and was just finishing her last lullaby of the evening. She had organized the toys in the room, the new ones and the old ones. She took the ballerina from the sleeping girl and the one-legged tin soldier from the dreaming boy. She placed them both in front of the cardboard castle in the center of the room. The nanny couldn't sleep well unless she had left the children and their room in perfect order. And now, at last, everything was just right. Or was it? Perhaps he'd only had a little too much birthday cake. But for some reason, the boy had a fitful sleep and a terrible nightmare about the Harlequin Jack in the Box that he had just received. He dreamed that it was no ordinary toy at all, but an evil goblin that didn't wish any of the other toys well. magical time in the nursery. The time when once everyone is asleep, the toys can dance and play by themselves. Unlike his comrades who were still locked in their box, the one-legged tin soldier was free to dance with the rest of the toys and meet some very interesting characters, like the rag doll. Also the sailor, the strong man, and the clown.
the tin soldier was honored to make the acquaintance of the Duke and Duchess of Frog. There was a lively and outgoing china doll. But what made the soldier's beating heart stop was the appearance of the beautiful ballerina he had met earlier that evening. She danced with such astounding grace and perfection that the soldier felt as if his tin heart would melt. Although they had been introduced earlier, the soldier was still shy about approaching the ballerina. The other toys encouraged him and suggested that he invite the ballerina to dance. Still, the soldier hesitated. How could he dance with the graceful ballerina when he had only one good leg? But the tin soldier was brave of heart, and his love for the ballerina left him no choice to go over to her. The soldier confessed to the ballerina that he felt awkward and uncomfortable, that one of his legs was false. But it made his spirit soar when she told him that she loved him exactly the way he was. Long into the evening, they danced and teased one another and played the silly sort of games that people in love often do.
But their evening together was not to go as planned. The horrible jack-in-the-box, whom you will recall was actually an evil goblin, interrupted their dance. Why do you stare at this pretty ballerina so, he asked the tin soldier. Keep your eyes to yourself. In fact, keep to yourself all together. The tin soldier tried to ignore him and pretend as if the ogre were not there. But the goblin jack-in-the-box was not so easy to dismiss. Before long, the other toys rushed to help the young lovers. But the Harlequin Goblin was not to be deterred. Just wait until tomorrow, he hissed. With the danger gone, the games continued. The toys in the nursery were not about to let one grouchy goblin ruin everyone's fun for the whole evening. And so it was that the Duke and Duchess of Frog led everyone in a courtly game of tennis. The beautiful ballerina had a treat for everyone too. She released a splendid bird from a cage so that everyone could see its magnificent feathers and hear its lilting voice. turned into a terrific party. The thing toys know best is how to play and have a good time. With dawn drawing nigh, it was time for the party to end. The tin soldier walked his lovely dancer back to the castle where she lived and said good night. When he was finally left alone, the tin soldier thought about what an extraordinary day it had been and what a special feeling being in love with the ballerina had given him.
It felt wonderful to have someone to care for. And since he was a soldier, he would make it his job to protect her. The delicate, graceful ballerina who lived in the castle. The tin soldier became lost in his deep feelings for her until... was the goblin. It was a fearsome struggle. The steadfast tin soldier fought valiantly. In the end, the powers of the goblin were too much for him, and the evil jack-in-the-box flung him out of the nursery window. Down three stories, down to the street, fell the tin soldier, and then into a drain which led to the sewer. In the sewer far below the street, it was a world that the tin soldier scarcely could have imagined. The soldier found his rifle and gripped it tightly. While he was as brave as any soldier ever was, the world of the sewer was a world of shadows, a place where dark shapes with clattering claws rushed by, and it filled him with fear. Not friendly rats either, but big, surly water rats. He could tell from their manner that they were of a bad breed. cried the rats. You aren't allowed to be down here without permission. You're breaking our laws, they taunted. For that, you will have to be punished. The tin soldier tried to escape, but there was no way out. Though he was hopelessly outnumbered, the soldier saw that he would have to fight. But the water rats grabbed him, and the steadfast tin soldier did not even have a chance.
rats seemed to be making sport of him. They overwhelmed him mercilessly. Just when all seemed lost, the tin soldier had a sort of vision. He could picture his beautiful ballerina, alone and vulnerable. Suddenly he knew, without doubt, that she was in terrible danger. His heart full of love for his ballerina, the tin soldier rallied all of his strength, and he fought back with such ferociousness that his enemies saw they had no chance against him. Somehow the tin soldier had to find his way back to the nursery and to the ballerina whom he loved. So he found an old cracked teacup and determined to use it as a boat and to sail out of the sewer wherever that might lead. The soldier and his little teacup traveled the inky blackness of the sewer until finally they came to a great opening that was blazing with light. It was the opening where the channel flowed into the ocean. The tin soldier hadn't any choice but to sail his fragile craft out into the deep waters. It wasn't long before the teacup gave way and the tin soldier found himself sinking fast. But in a flash, a great fish snapped him up and swam away. Nanny returns from the market with what she needs to prepare dinner. Tonight, the family would have a delicious big fish. It was the most amazing, incredible, astonishing thing ever. It had been weeks since the one-legged tin soldier disappeared. They turned the house upside down looking for him. 
They'd hunted under beds, behind pillow cushions, and even searched out in the streets. But now, here, inside the fish, was the soldier. For the boy to have the soldier back again was cause for the greatest celebration. How he had missed him! What wondrous stories the soldier must have to tell him of his adventures. He would ask for a full report. How had he left the nursery? What battles did he have to fight? And what were the circumstances that had caused him to be gobbled up by a fish? Tin Soldier's return had not come a moment too soon. Back in the nursery, his lovely ballerina was constantly having to fend off unwelcome advances from the repulsive jack-in-the-box. children came to return the tin soldier to his home in front of the cardboard castle. It seemed strange to them that the ballerina was out of place. But they reunited the true lovers and then went on about their busy day of playing. it was time for dinner and the children had to put down what they were doing. Once they were alone, the toys all rejoiced at the tin soldier's return. But as they rushed to greet him, something was obviously wrong. He smelled like fish. In a case like this, there was only one thing to do. Then, suddenly, there she was. The ballerina for whom the tin soldier's love had only grown stronger.
the occasion, said the rag doll. And all of their friends agreed. Tonight, they would have the biggest party ever. But not everybody was happy about the return of the Tin Soldier. The Goblin Jack in the Box reappeared. He taunted and scoffed at the Tin Soldier. He ridiculed his stiff military behavior and mocked his false leg. The Goblin said that the Soldier was unworthy of the beautiful ballerina and he took her away. After that, panic and confusion ruled the nursery. It was up to the Tin Soldier to save the day. But this time, he had something more with which to combat the treacherous villain. He had the love for his ballerina. A love which had been made even stronger by his absence from her. The Tin Soldier meant to make his move now and make it count. To the delight of all, the terrible goblin was now defeated. Goodbye, waved the Duke and Duchess of Frog. And with that, the Tin Soldier gave a mighty thrust and flung the Jack in the Box goblin over the castle wall. There was a terrible sound when he landed, and no one doubted that he had met his end.
after dinner in the nursery, a shattered jack-in-the-box waited to surprise everyone. The children were at a loss to explain how the toy had been broken. But that wasn't the only surprise. They found the tin soldier and the ballerina doll together in an embrace. It was astounding and completely unexplainable. The spectacle made the girl leap for joy and she went out to tell everyone the news. They all came into the nursery to see. It was remarkable how tenderly the dolls seemed to hold each other. The children decided this must mean that now the tin soldier and the ballerina were married. The new king and queen of this tiny merry land. The boy placed them carefully in the cardboard castle, where they would live together, like in any good fairy tale, happily ever after.